Adventist another saturday and another saturday wisdom episode there is a debate both among the intelligentsia and the common people on whether one should opt for a decent job or one should develop or create one's own startup these debates are sometimes cerebral intelligent debates and sometimes a survey they lead to fights whereas the government seems to show the gdp growth in terms of new jobs and job opportunities created the opposition seems to argue that the growth has been devoid of a commensurate increase in jobs several panel discussions on the subject also seem to debate this dichotomy extensively formal employment boosts output and real income government budgets usually strive for creating opportunities for real employment and the present budget is also expected to do the same however people must be free to choose decide how much they wish to work and where they wish to work so as to maximize their welfare that is based on appropriate incentives employment must ensure minimum number of hours and longevity of employment the skill dimension of employment is very important for real income and for work satisfaction a skill mission that leaves a lot desired on delivery and a job market that is devoid of labor management information systems cannot fulfill the aspirations of either the government or the people both will need to be strengthened economic growth is determined by the rate of increase in the labor force and productivity growth if fewer people are working unless there is a surge in new workers or everyone suddenly becomes more productive growth slows this is exactly what happened over the past decade or so in the united states and probably happening now in our country as well to the extent that an aging population continues to retire lower labor force participation may be an even bigger drag on the growth in the future read with a 65% population below the age of 30 years this can be a difficult problem to decode we know that the corona virus pandemic has affected all sectors of economy in 2020 and even 2021 from movie theaters and entertainment industry to warehouses and food processing facilities from small and medium scale businesses and industry to heavy industry from education in schools to education in colleges and universities everything had been affected many businesses across the country saw their supply chains interrupted demand for their products and services declined they saw shortages in supplies and inputs too we all had to endure government mandated closures in order to beat the effects of the pandemic the global covid-19 pandemic has changed our experiences as customers as employees as citizens as humans and our attitudes and behaviors probably forever the crisis is also changing how and what consumers buy it is even accelerating immense structural changes in the consumer goods industry 
even as the immediate threat of the virus seems to be passing, seems to be waning, our companies will need to consider the impact of these changes on the way they design, they communicate, they build and run the experiences that people will want in future. Friends, after long periods of lull, the current times seem to be suggesting that our economy is turning the corner, is getting to be better. The nation must focus on creating employment opportunities for its citizens. If the policies are bad, then advantages accrued due to demographics of young people, which is currently on our side, can be lost. Policies must ensure labor-intensive light manufacturing industries supported by a conducive investment climate which can deliver productive jobs for low-skilled workers on a large scale. The government and its policies seem to be doing this and it needs to improve further. SEMs can contribute a large share of employment but their net job creation rate may remain similar to large firms. That is a concern. Development agencies focused on job creation through SMEs should therefore target small firms that grow over a period of time. Creating wage jobs in the manufacturing and service sectors has great potential in the medium term, but increasing productivity and incomes of people in traditional agriculture can give dividends in the short term. So the policies must be based on these factors. The International Labour Organization in a report on the World Employment and Social Outlook released last year said Asia Pacific region will add 23 million jobs in the current and in the subsequent year aided by employment growth in the South Asian nations including India. However, we must be concerned of the unemployed in the country and make adequate provisions to improve employment opportunities for them. Manufacturing industry with a thrust on digital manufacturing has undergone a phenomenal transformation in the last two decades. Large-scale automation, artificial intelligence, robotics and special purpose machine tools have redefined job roles and rendered several traditional ones redundant. Several manufacturers have outsourced an extent of 90% and above their operations to other countries to remain competitive. The downside seems to be loss of jobs in their own countries. IT industry, one of the largest employers in recent times, also has been struggling at a local with a local recession where automation enables instructions to create a repeated process that replaces an IT professional's manual work of coding in data centers and with the use of cloud deployments. Software tools, frameworks and appliances conduct the tasks with minimum administrator intervention rendering several professionals 
with nothing to work for. Obviously, the jobs are mutating to those that require higher order skills at all levels. In reality, a number of jobs being created are of poor quality. Despite the strong economic growth that can render almost 77% of workers in India with vulnerable employment. Vulnerable employment affects most, almost half of all workers in the Asia Pacific or more than 900 million men and women. The high and persistent incidence of vulnerable employment largely reflects the fact that structural transformation processes whereby capital and workers transfer from low to higher value added sectors are lagging behind in the country. We should be worried that while the overall employment or overall unemployment rate as reported by Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, CMIE, an independent think tank, is about 7.9% as in December 21, the unemployment rate in the 15 years to 24 years age group is much, much higher. However, it's now seeing a rebound, largely due to pent-up demand that has accumulated because of the pandemic and increased government spending. The concern, however, is that the jobs, the real jobs are diminishing. Friends, an Indian overseas job and money remittances essentially depend on the US, the Gulf and the Australian markets in the main. Recent world view on jobs seems to be country first in all these countries. Reducing American jobs and frequent criticism of the outsourcing industry for replacing US workers with those from overseas and the tightening of criteria for letting foreign workers or foreign employees into US, particularly through the controversial H-1B visa program of the Trump regime, have all had a sobering effect on an already stretched knowledge worker or the intelligent worker. The headhunters, the leadership hiring firms anticipate terminations will accelerate in times to come unless the economy of the world picks up by many many times. The economic slump that we saw out of an unprecedented fall in crude oil prices in 2020 and the geopolitical tension in the Persian Gulf affected our economy as well. This had a sobering effect on the labor and material ferried between Arabia and India which further slowed down considerably the job markets. The Australian government recent announcement abolishing the temporary work subclass 457 skill visa and its replacement with a completely new temporary skill shortage TSS visa a couple of years back also affected the Indian worker. While the market pressures are easy amidst the pandemic turning endemic and the economy looking up again, it is good to assume that more employment opportunities will evolve in times to come. Instead of an assured employment in the private or a public sector, an innovative business initiative may be a way out. Netflix, for example, disrupted the video industry 
to the point that the neighborhood video stores were rendered things of the past. In its place, people stream movies and games to their TVs and mobiles through a subscription service or an application. These are case studies that must be studied for better adoption and new strategies in future. Are then entrepreneurship and startup the buzzwords? Small businesses are often called the backbone of the economy. What is the link between entrepreneurship and job creation? For our economy to thrive, there must be competition, there must be growth and there must be innovation. Successful entrepreneurs tend to be mutually competitive, think out of box and see through many of the easy answers. If in the process a debate on marketing pakodas takes center stage, can it not be seen as a market disruption? If a startup that researches pakodas or its varieties in different countries, in different states of our own, explores different frying methods, markets them through innovative storage and an innovative campaign, creating a supply chain of pakodas to home along the way, can it not trip the McDonald's and Burger Kings and their like? New businesses may start thriving by bringing an existing product to a new group of customers. But as at some point, they will begin to draw customers away from the other businesses if they are going to succeed. Certainly this is a new way forward. So friends, how does the Indian startup scene look like? Very, very encouraging. It's very heartening to know that India with 90 unicorns is the third largest unicorn hub behind the US with 487 unicorns and China with 301 unicorns and is ahead of the United Kingdom which has only 39 unicorns. It is even more that Oreo's venture print partners reported that the Indian startups have raised $42 billion in 2021 even amongst the raising pandemic up from $11.5 billion in the previous year 2020. Though some catching up is required, I am sure we will be there ahead of China as well. Friends, let's watch this. The Startup India journey for some useful tips from the government of India. A billion dreams and behind each there is an idea. Launching a startup is a dream for many entrepreneurs today. And our Honorable Prime Minister's vision is a guiding light. Hindustan ka koi jila, Hindustan ka koi block aisa na ho ki aane wale dino mein naye startup shuru na ho. Startup India An initiative of the Government of India that promotes entrepreneurship by nurturing, mentoring and facilitating startups throughout their life cycle. January 2016 saw the launch of the Action Plan a big step to help entrepreneurs get started. We have a tech startup idea but don't know where to begin. Honestly, I have no business background but don't know where to go for advice. The Startup India Hub is a unique platform that addresses your requirements. It identifies and approaches the right mentors, incubators, accelerators and investors. And you can access all of this through the Startup India app or the website. Dad said, I don't start up like this. I don't business to do business. Well, I didn't come. But then I took the free Startup India learning program and here I am. Protecting the idea is very important, but how do I start? The government appointed facilitator helped me find my patents for almost no cost. Idea or funding is not the start of the startup. Government requirements, paperwork 
और सरकारी दफ्तरों में भागा दौड़ी इसका खर्चा कहाँ से आएगा टाटा इंडिया अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड हेल्प ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स सेल्फ सर्टिफाई फॉर कम्प्लायस अंडर सिक्स लेबर एंड थ्री एनवायरमेंट लॉज एंड सेवरल स्टेट आर इन अडियरेंस गाइडेंस एंड मेंटरशिप इज ग्रेट बट स्टार्टअप नीड्स द राइट रिसोर्सेज टू ग्रो This is why academia and the industry have been brought together to set up research parks, incubators and startup centers across the country. Let's look at biotechnology today. Bio clusters and bio incubators are being set up at major national research institutes and universities to help startups in every possible way. We know funding is a big roadblock for startups. The government has created a fund of funds that will help startups gain access to funding. Entrepreneurs will no longer face the challenge of initial profitability. The exemption under the Startup India initiative gives you a 3 year tax holiday out of a block of 7 years. You can reinvest the capital, really make a business big. Businesses fail all the time. Startup India helps you wind up your business in 90 days and move on to your next thing. we are committed to promote entrepreneurship innovation and startups in the country we have been taken a number of steps and initiatives to strengthen the ecosystem for startups and we are committed to doing whatever is required to be done to further promote this ecosystem and provide our entrepreneurs and the young people with the opportunities that they require spirit of entrepreneurship begins early and atal tinkering labs at school level encourage this very spirit plus many programs help at the college level too the government is constantly moving forward but with the inputs which come from people the government is going to be a honest facilitator we want to make sure that the startups are not going to be wondering as to who is going to help them we are here access us for information access us for suggestions and access us also tell us that we should do things better this way or that we are here to help you we want you to succeed as a good startup entrepreneur we are with you with startup india by your side why wait come on india let's start up get recognized with startup india because we are here to help that's all for this saturday we will meet once again the next saturday for another episode that i am sure will make your you make you rack your gray cells a little more thank you namaskar and dhanyawad